Well, hello, Michael here. Looking again at Psalms 27 today, specifically verse two and three for the exposition. And we're gonna read the first three verses then of the psalm, which is subtitled "The Lord is my light and my salvation." Verse one: The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2 When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Verse 3 Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. And so looking to the treasury of David, as written by Charles Spurgeon, we look at the exposition on verse 2. This verse records a past deliverance and is an instance of the way in which experience should be employed to reassure our faith in times of trial. Each word is instructive when the wicked. It is a hopeful sign for us when the wicked hate us. If our foes were godly men, it would be a sore sorrow. But as for the wicked, their hatred is better than their love. Even mine enemies and my foes, there were many of them. They were of different sorts, but they were unanimous in mischief and hearty in hatred. Come up on me. Advance to the attack, leaping up on the victim like a lion upon its prey to eat up my flesh. Like cannibals, they would make a full end of the man, tear him limb from limb, and make a feast for their malice. The enemies of our souls are not deficient in ferocity. They yield no quarter, and ought to have none in return. See in what danger David was, in the grip and grasp of numerous powerful and cruel enemies, and yet observe his perfect safety and their utter discomfiture. They stumbled and fell. God's breath blew them off their legs. There were stones in the way which they never reckoned upon, and over these they made an ignominious tumble. This was literally true in the case of our Lord in Gethsemane, when those who came to take him went backward and fell to the ground, and herein he was a prophetic representative of all wrestling believers who, rising from their knees, shall, by the power of faith, throw their foes upon their faces. Verse 3 Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Before the actual conflict, while as yet the battle is untried, the warrior's heart be, being held in suspense, is very liable to become flooded. The encamping host often inspires greater dread than the same host in actual affray. Young tells of some who feel a thousand deaths in fear in one. Doubtless, the shadow of anticipated trouble is, to timorous minds, a more prolific source of sorrow than the trouble itself. But faith puts a strengthening plaster to the back of courage and throws out of the window the dregs of the cup of trembling. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. When it actually comes to push of pike, faith's shield will ward off the blow. And if the first brush should be but the beginning of a war, yet faith's banner will wave in spite of the foe. Though battle should succeed battle, and one campaign should be followed by another, the believer will not be dismayed at the length of the conflict. Reader, this third verse is the comfortable and logical inference from the second. Confidence is the child of experience. Have you been delivered out of great peril? Then set up your ensign, wait at your watchfire, and let the enemy do his worst. <sighs> yes, indeed. 
enemies there are. But praise be to God. He is my light and my salvation. Trust you enjoyed the meditation. Michael here declaring yet again, Jesus is Lord. Until next time, be blessed.